One of the main experiments on NASA's InSight lander is a heat flow probe. Now this experiment is going to try and understand how much heat is being irradiated out of the inner core of Mars. But in this video, we're going to go over some of the fundamental concepts behind how this probe works, how it's going to drill into the Martian soil or regolith, and what scientists hope to get out of this experiment. So let's talk about that. Now the first thing about this experiment is it has a name. It's HPQ, which stands for Heat Flow and Physical Properties Probe. And more recently, it's been nicknamed the Mole because it's going to be digging into the Martian surface. Now the main purpose of this experiment, as I mentioned before, is to try and understand how much heat is irradiating out of the inner core of Mars. Ultimately, this is going to help us understand how much of Mars's inner core is liquid, which could possibly be the reason why it doesn't have a very strong magnetic field. So how exactly is HP cubed going to get this information? Well, the probe is going to burrow itself five meters below the surface of Mars, and there's going to be a tether that connects the very bottom probe all the way back to the lander itself. And on that tether, every around 23 to 46 centimeters, there will be a heat sensor that's going to measure the local heat in the area or the depth that it is at. Ultimately, being able to measure the temperature at different depths at the exact same time will tell them a lot about how exactly heat is flowing out of Mars. And the plan is to be able to actually take these measurements every 15 minutes for a few months. So that's a lot of data points that they'll be able to look at. Now here is a picture of the actual experiment. The box in the back is what's going to hold the tether prior to the hole actually being dug. And the cylinder that's standing up is what's going to hold the probe or the mole that's going to drill into the Martian surface. But the drill isn't going to work as you may think a typical drill works here on Earth. In fact, it's going to be using a self-hammering process instead of drilling it like a spiral. Now, as you can see in the video right now, there is a motor that spins something called a roller, and this roller is connected to two springs, one on the bottom and one on the top. Now, it's kind of hard to tell what exactly is happening, but the basic concept is as the motor spins, it pushes up on a spring, and then once it releases the spring, it quickly hits the outer skirts of the casing, or the probe itself, which is shaped somewhat like a pencil head or the end of a pencil. And by hitting this, it's then able to drill itself into the Martian regolith as if it was being hammered down. But instead of something external hammering it down, it's actually a spring motor mechanism that's happening on the inside. Now, as the probe actually digs through the surface, every 50 centimeters, it's going to be sending out a heat pulse. So it will stop for a little while, send out a heat pulse, and measure how the temperature varies over time. And this will give them a better understanding of how exactly heat flows through the different compositions or different depths of the Martian regolith. This is a very important part of the experiment because it will give them a better understanding of how much the area around this probe will conduct heat, similar to how a metal will get cool much faster, whereas things such as glass and wood can hold heat for a very long time. Now with all that being said, digging 5 meters into Mars is a pretty big deal. Yes, it doesn't sound like a lot, but this will be the most we've dug into any planet or celestial body other than Earth. Now, the main question that a lot of people have had is are you actually going to be able to accurately represent how much heat is leaving Mars just by digging 5 meters down into the surface? And the answer to that is most likely yes, but we have to make a lot of assumptions. Now similarly, here on Earth, we have to use a lot of seismic readings to be able to understand what the composition of Earth is underneath our feet. However, we have to make the same assumptions when we go to Mars. That's why most of the experiments on board InSight are trying to understand seismic activity and what's going on on the inner planet. It's not just this one experiment working by itself. So the combination of all this data is what's going to try and give us information about how much heat is being exhausted and whether or not a lot of the inner core is actually liquid. Now to tie this back to Earth again, if we were to drill 5 meters down beneath the surface, we would expect to see a raise in temperature of about 0.125 degrees Celsius, which as I mentioned before isn't a lot, but ultimately the heat flow probe and the heat sensors on the probe are going to be able to detect changes in temperatures as low as 0.001 degrees Celsius, which is really important because that shows that we'll be able to accurately represent changes throughout maybe a five meter depth on Mars. 
So now let's briefly explain why it's important that we need to understand more about the interior of other terrestrial planets. As we proposed here on Earth, there are two main factors that go into why we have a molten core. One of which is the fact that when the planet was forming as a whole, there were a lot of asteroid impacts and rather large collisions that created a lot of heat when things were hitting each other. Therefore, some of that residue heat still exists in the inner core. Another assumption is made that there's a lot of radioactive material that is decaying over time and that decaying is eventually leading a lot of heat. It's thought that the radioactive material decaying is actually has a bigger impact than some of the earlier collisions when the planet was forming. However, we really don't know for sure. Some people say it could be as big as 90% radioactive material and some people say it could be 50-50. So we don't even know a lot about what's going on here on Earth. So if we take information or data from what's going on on Mars, we can make a better understanding of, okay, maybe it is the radioactive material and Earth just got really lucky or it does have a really big impact on how much heat is exhausted in the early formation of these planets. Now the last thing I want to say about this experiment overall is what if this isn't the first time that one was on Mars? In fact, there already is one probably safely sitting on the surface of Mars, however it hasn't been functioned. In 2003, the European Space Agency sent the Mars Express Orbiter, and with it was the Beagle 2 lander. Now, Beagle 2 is thought to have successfully landed on Mars, however, its solar panels did not deploy successfully. And one of the experiments on board Beagle 2 was called Pluto, which is a heat flow probe which was only going to dig 1.5 meters down into the surface, but it was going to try and understand the exact same thing. How does the temperature gradient change at various depths beneath the surface of Mars? Now unfortunately, Beagle 2 didn't work as I mentioned and therefore Pluto never functioned. And luckily, InSight, its solar panels deployed, so we'll actually be able to get the data from HP Cubed. If you have any questions about the HP Cubed experiment, let me know in the comments below. And what do you think? Do you think it should have been designed to dig deeper into Mars, maybe 50 or 100 meters rather than the 5? Again, let me know below. But thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.